The immune system of the human body is vast and comprises of so many cells and elements. Even if it's a complex system, here at scadia.com we have covered several topics related to immunology. And in this lecture, we both will help you understand how the immune system is connected and how the cells of immunity communicate with each other. First, I will give a brief introduction to how important cytokines are in the immune system, and then my friend here help you understand the role of cytokines in carrying out the immune responses. Yes, and I will also tell you about the consequence of the excessive production of cytokines. We know about the two immune responses, the innate response that is present since birth and the adaptive response which is acquired over time. The two responses do not work properly without the presence of the other, so there must be something that connects the two responses, right? As the cells of the adaptive and innate immune systems cannot function in isolation, immune cells use cytokines to communicate with each other and with different tissues in the body. The topic of our discussion today is this messenger molecule called the cytokines. Cytokines are soluble messenger molecules that are typically secreted by immune system cells. Non-immune cells, for example, the epithelial cells, secrete some cytokines, including type I interferons and tumor necrosis factor. Most cytokines are only produced when cells become activated as part of the response to infection, while some are continuously secreted at low levels. Immunologists have also divided the cytokines as those of the innate system and the adaptive system. Adaptive immune system cytokines are secreted at very low levels and affect only neighboring cells, paracrine effects, or even the secreting cell itself, autocrine effects. This low-level secretion is to maintain the specificity of the adaptive immune system. For example, interleukin-2, secreted by activated T cells, has potent effects that induce T cell proliferation. Most of these effects are mediated on the cell that is secreting interleukin-2. If IL-2 were secreted at high levels, it might activate cells that were not recognizing specific antigen. Because of the low level of secretion, however, adaptive immune system cytokines are almost impossible to detect in fresh blood samples. Cytokines of the innate immune system are often secreted at low levels over a short range, such as chemokines directed at attracting neutrophils to the site of infection, but they can also be secreted at high enough levels to be measurable in blood samples. When they are secreted at high levels, they act like hormones of the endocrine system. For example, IL-1, IL-6, and TNF secreted during an acute phase response can have distant effects such as induction of fever. Since they are secreted in response to infection, the bulk of cytokines are only fleetingly secreted. For instance, interleukin-2 is only released for about 8 hours by activated T cells. A longer secretion would result in an excessive immune system activation that is unwarranted and possibly dangerous. Normally, after an infection is treated, cytokine production falls. Additionally, to prevent an immune response from lingering, inhibitory cytokines, like interleukin-10, and transforming growth factor beta may be released at the end of an immune response. Cytokine receptors are also often only expressed transiently. Again, this mechanism has evolved to prevent inappropriate activation of the immune system. Two more important features of cytokines that you should familiarize yourself with are redundancy and pleiotropism. Redundancy refers to the fact that, in general, several cytokines secreted during an immune response have very similar properties. For example, tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1 have similar effects. These cytokines synergize with one another. In other words, the impact of both cytokines being secreted together is greater than the sum of the effects of the individual cytokines. This is important clinically because attempts to block the effects of cytokines may not always guarantee clinical outcomes. Anti-TNF monoclonal antibodies are successful at preventing joint damage in rheumatoid arthritis, for example, but do not completely prevent disease because interleukin-1 is also mediating damage. 
Pleiotropism refers to the fact that many cytokines affect several different types of cells. This is also clinically important. The antiviral effects of interferon alpha are used to treat hepatitis B virus infection. But interferon alpha makes patients feel unwell because it induces an acute phase response. So that is all about the general characteristics of cytokines. In the coming section, I will teach you about the modes of communication between the cells and the cytokine receptor that receive these signals. And I will walk you through the role of cytokine in the immune response, as well as what happens when there is uncontrolled activation of the immune response that results in excessive production of cytokines. Explore our extensive library of over 1,800 video lectures to learn about a wide range of topics. Only on scotia.com.